Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today. You're going to be taking a look back at the World Rallycross event at Hell uh, that I would take part in. Now, so far in this uh, esports series, I've been doing relatively well with the Audi fighting up against the Peugeots. The 208s in sort of stock tuning guys was the vehicle to have. However, for this round, the tuning had been unlimited. The tuning was opened so that the cars could have some custom setups uh, run. The hope being to make some of the other cars get a bit more uh, variety, make the other cars a little bit faster. Now, for this one, I don't know how to tune cars. I went on the internet. I'll put a link in the description to the tune that I ended up running on my Audi. Very good, very wacky tune, a little bit quite extreme, but very, very good tune for this car. And it certainly helped me get the vehicle a little bit, uh, a little bit more competitive. I have to say, I really rather like hell. I really, really quite like this circuit. So, for the first heat, I mean, it's a bit of a terrifying heat that we had lined up here. We had Blomquist, uh, Timmy Hansen, Henrik Krodstad all in here. I knew how quick they had been in a previous race. I hadn't raced against uh, Tamara up until now, but I knew how quick uh, those three had been in the previous rounds. And I was, I was say, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit nervous, a little bit scared racing against cars. It was going to be a tough race. I knew it was going to be a tough race. Hell has an interesting joker lap. That much is for sure. Uh, now, starting on the inside, so me and Blomquist on the inside here, you know, we're not really likely to be able to take the joker on the first lap. You start in the middle position, it always gets a little bit more sketchy. You start on the outside, then chances are you probably are going to want to run and take the joker lap. It's kind of like a big decision in this race, and you only get a tiny fraction of a second to decide. But if you get a really good start from the inside, maybe you'd take it. But uh, you already get such tiny amounts of time. To, uh, to try and make a decision. So, if we all launch off, Crocsad in this one would end up getting a little bit of a jump start. I'm going to squeeze across to the inside from, uh, from Hansen. Didn't really, I, I admittedly had got a better start than um, uh, Blomquist, but I didn't, know, I didn't, didn't know as such how much space I had through there. A little bit of, uh, little bit of trading paint uh, going around on this first lap. We head down to the hairpin for the first time. Now, I love this hairpin. It's my favourite corner. We actually get uh, alongside Hansen once more. Can't quite find a way past. Have to back out of it uh, in the end as we head up uh, towards these final corners. Now I get a little bit, I get a little bit bopped around in this one. It's a little bit less than ideal. Uh, Blomquist finds a way to the inside. Uh, we end up, it's, we had a bit, a bit of trouble. It didn't quite go according to plan, really, for all of us in this one. We just ended up in not the right places. I uh, see. I thought Blomquist was going to take the normal lap here, and I committed to go to Joker. And last second, I think it changed their mind to uh, run through the Joker. So. Uh, was, so it wasn't quite, wasn't quite ideal. At the end, uh, so at the end, they weren't really being slowed down by that car. It's a little bit further, a little bit further down the road. I was hoping to just kind of run around in clean air, hope that Hanson and Crossover would have sort of busy fight one another, make each other sort of slow each other down uh, around the course of, uh, of this one. And uh, the joker lap here, uh, it reckons that the, the, the delta is two point two. That's a little bit lean, and it's close to three seconds. Really, it depends on how well you get it. Uh, through all of that and for this we could now just kind of focus on almost running our own race a little bit Crocsad would take the joke of course uh, Crocsad was going to have a bad time uh, regardless of what happened here whether we beat that car or not it was going to be I think it was a 20 second penalty for the jump start so we were going to end up ahead of it the important thing is though of course because qualifying for the rallycross is done on your, your finish time and that's compared to all the other heats it was important not to get slowed down too much we'd had a bit of an iffy first lap that much was for sure uh, up ahead Crocsad hit the wall uh, on the inside and spun around in front of Blomquist that had caused both of them some issues. I was now right on the tail end of this group. Wasn't my fastest driving at the moment, I will be honest with you. Uh, low 34s are what I could be doing with the car and it just hadn't quite got it all together as of yet. We actually ended up uh, on the inside. Blomquist got itself a bit of trouble. It did a little bit scruffy uh, around this. Uh, Timmy was able to stay well out in front, sort of stay clear of all of this, all of this battle. I made the right hash the hairpin on this one. It was almost like a bit of a warm-up race, but it was like a bit of a warm-up race. I could have done without it being a bit of a warm-up race. Yeah, not my... Not quite my very finest piece of driving. Now, we had lost little bits of time, but it hadn't been anything horrific. We hadn't had massive, massive troubles. We were around the final corner. It was going to be across the line. It wasn't... Yeah, as I said, it wasn't the cleanest of first rounds. It wasn't a perfect first round. However, you know, we got a third We got a third overall, and at least we didn't have any, like, massive, massive time losses. We didn't have any spins, any punches. There were little bits of bumping, you know, a couple of seconds here and there lost. Uh, however, it was an okay start. It was an okay start. On to the second heat uh, we would go. Now, uh, in this one there had been, unfortunately, a few people had, had internet troubles, had a few disconnects, hadn't quite got connect, hadn't quite able to join. There were a couple of sort of small heats uh, being run with only two or three cards. I never got one of those. I was always in a full heat. I was always in a busy heat. Uh, this one, there was 
a uh, interloper, but accidentally an AI had been turned on that shouldn't have been there. So <laughs> there was there was an AI. Car. Thankfully, that wouldn't play a part whatsoever uh, in this one. Now this was a terrifying heat. I was going to finally race against, actually race on track against uh, Shane Van Gisbergen, one of my favourite of the V8 supercar drivers. Now the start was weird for this. Um, for a couple of us, it was. I, it was like it just immediately launched and I was not ready in the slightest. Now, I don't know whether that was the game being weird. I'd have made a complete hash of the Joker. I went to the Joker because it had all got a bit of a weird start. I figured, you know what, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to get it out of the way and just run my own race. Um, it was a weird start sequence. I don't know. If, there is a little occasional bug with dirt when it comes to the comes to the start line. But no one seemed really prepared at all except for Vakuska. So something went on. Something went on, not really sure what it was, but we would got going and it was going to be a case of me just making, I say making sure that uh, I ran as, as clean a race as I possibly could. And now the AI was up ahead of us. Thankfully for me, it would dive into the joke lap this time around and wouldn't affect me. And it wouldn't affect anybody else uh, whatsoever because everyone else was, was out in front of it. AI not particularly quick around here, but as long as the car got cleared, that was fine. Now up ahead, it was all pretty close between the top three. And while we don't see it from my point of view, you will see if you watch the, the proper broadcast, there'll be a link in the description if you want to watch the whole, the whole of this race, the whole broadcast uh, from the replay cameras uh, and so on from all the different heats as well. Uh, but the three of them were far too busy having their own battle and there were some bumps, there was some shunting uh, going on between the lot of them, which would help me because I was in clean air. I was staying well out of all of this. Uh, Van Gisbergen would end up uh, taking a joker and smacking into the back of Pekuska uh, that would spin the Renault around and we'd all kind of end up together. And as they left their joker, we almost, I almost got an overtake on Van Gisbergen. Near, near. We got alongside, unfortunately we got stuck on the outside heading down towards the heaven. Can't quite have that as a claim to fame. Nearly got a pass on Van Gisbergen, though. Uh, Van Gisbergen is stupendously quick at this game. Bloody hell, and it was helped out, and, you know, it was helped out by issues and whatnot going on. We almost got it to stick, though, at that particular corner. Around the final turn. Again, I wasn't really excelling in the in the dry around here. Uh, I, did, I, did, I couldn't quite get to the pace that I knew I, knew I had in the car. Uh, Bakuska would dive through the Joker this time around, and they'd all come out uh, in one big group once again. And I was hoping to just kind of, I say, be here to pick out the pieces if there was any opportunity after the slightly iffy start and whatnot. We're not quite there. Uh, we check it into the hairpin. Now, the leader had a really big wobble for all of that. Van Gisbergen moved up to second, uh, pushing the Renault a little bit wide as we all came barreling down towards the final corner. They were all having a big old fight. The Persia, when the lead was out wide, Van Gisbergen chucks up the inside. The Renault gets all sorts of wrong. I get to the inside, hoping to outrun the Renault. Now, things get a bit confusing here. So the leader had a five-second penalty for track limits, drops down. I beat the Renault. Now, I think this is to do with the weird start line glitch going on. Uh, because I, maybe I got held longer on the grid, the overall time readjusted itself, so it actually gave me, uh, put me ahead of the Renault. Van Gisbergen would later cop a five-second penalty for the spin on Bakuska uh, that we didn't get to see from this point of view, which technically meant I won a heat. <laughs> technically speaking, I would uh, win my first heat. So... I mean, even without that, I had, had, had a very good heat. Um, had a, again, decent overall time, hadn't really lost too much, and that's what mattered. We then got to the rain, and it was pouring down with uh, with rain here. I'd done a little bit of practice in the wet. Of course, you, you do spend most of the time practicing in the dry with these circuits, time trials and whatnot, but I had been doing some practice in the wet, and I quite liked the Audi. It seemed to be working relatively well in the wet. I was the lone Audi in a field of Peugeots uh, in this one. Not quite what we wanted, but there we go. Uh, I would be on the far inside as well. Uh, unlike some of the previous tracks, hell is not too bad. Hell is not too bad for sort of close racing. Also, the run towards turn one. While the joke lap is dangerous, there isn't any horrific tyre bundles, anything like that, that uh, we might end up crashing our way into. So I knew I'm not, you know, I'm not taking the joke lap from here. We're not going to be taking that joke lap. We're going to run down towards the first corner. The Peugeot's get a little bit of a better start. We get a little bit of a squeeze, but nothing too crazy. We just kind of back it off a little bit. We're going to be careful uh, through here. And now I believe... Uh, Foreskin was having some internet issues in this race, so they wouldn't particularly feature. Um, however, the other two would dive into the Joker on the first lap. I would be left fighting with uh, Birmingham around here. So, opening lap, uh, I actually get things a little bit wrong at the hairpin, drift a little bit wide, clonk into the wall. Now, the rain doesn't make the craziest, biggest of differences. It's a couple of seconds a lap around here. However, of course, that is a difference. You know, your braking points are a smidge different. You've got to be slowing the car down in slightly different ways, turning a little bit different because there is just that little bit, uh, that little bit less grip. And yeah, you know, in, in dirt rally, you get the speed by throwing the cars very, very sideways. Now, the place that I had really figured out at this circuit, as uh, Bloomingrad has a look on the inside, but there's no way you're going to get a pass done through there. This hairpin, I've got. 
I got the hang of this hairpin and it absolutely was nailing it in the wet. I don't know why, just in the wet I could get it almost perfect every time through there, which was really helpful because I could make that gap to the car behind. Uh, this little section here I was not quite as good and the Peugeot was now right behind me and I made a small mistake coming around the final corner. I didn't quite get it turned in right and as we head up across the start finish line, now there's a car on the inside. I was expecting them to take the normal lap, I was going to the joker lap, they didn't. Uh, they actually pushed me into the joker lap, well a bit more into the joker lap than I'd intended but nothing too terrible. As we leave the joker lap unfortunately we both lose out to the other two cars. However we were all once again in a big group, we were all very very close together and coming down to the hairpin Peugeot ahead, gets it a little bit wrong, we're going to take the opportunity. Now, when I turned in, I didn't realise I was going to make that pass stick. I didn't realise the Peugeot was going to be quite as wide. That's just the line I wanted to take and I was going to go for it. And we did. It's a lovely, lovely overtake up the inside. Now, <laughs> Birmingham tries the inside at the final corner, doesn't make it work, ends up in the door, kind of pushes me around the final corner. It's fine, we both get away with it. Not too bad in this. Uh, Svartel was out in front by enough that we couldn't really do all that much. Now, I wanted to get past. Uh, Vandalin, if I could. And I knew where the best opportunity was. I actually had a really good run through the start of this as we came down to the hairpin. Uh, Vandalin got all out of shape and I did my chuck the car very sideways through there. Not as sideways as I had done uh, previous, but uh, with Vandalin having a big wobble, I think they turned in a fraction too soon and had to try and correct it and just ended up out wide. I would get the Audi pass. It'd be two passes in two laps for me at the hairpin. We weren't going to change the lead. We had a little bit bop through the final quarter, but it's not enough. In fact, uh, Vandalin would fall down to uh, fourth in order. That one, uh, we would end up in a second place. Some proper good overtaking from the Audi. It had been quick. It had been quick. And again, yeah, we were fighting for, in fact, we were fighting for the whole of that one. Um, but it hadn't cost us all that. You know, we hadn't lost time from big contacts, from spins and all of that. So again, overall qualifying time was uh, was going well. Uh, as I said, um, Faraskin was having, having internet issues. Lap time-wise was looking pretty good. Uh, pretty good for me. Not quite up there with uh, Svartel. That was a little too fast. A little too fast in that uh, in that Peugeot. But uh, I was really pleased with that race. Was obviously one of the most, most entertaining, one of the wildest rallycross races I've ever done. But it was fantastic because there was a lot of good... Not going to overtake, not going to passes and so on. The final of the heats was a terrifying one. I did not have easy heats, I'll tell you that much. Timmy Hansen, Tom Blomquist, uh, Martin Enland, Henrik Krodstad, all in this, in this heat. That's a terrifying lineup of vehicles. I knew how fast all of them were. I mean, Blomquist had beaten Van Gisbergen, uh, the only car to have beaten Van Gisbergen in the previous round. I mean, you got Timmy Hansen in here, uh, you know, World Rallycross champion. Uh, Krogstad had overtaken me and been convincingly quicker than me in, in Yaz and so on. Uh, this was a tough, tough heat, and I knew it was going to be such, but the Audi was going, the Audi was going well. Uh, I think we had, we had a Fiesta in this one as well, Martin Enland had been going quickly as well. So, you know, this was a heat of very, very quick vehicles. I was hoping, again, to have a nice, uh, a nice exciting time. I was in that horrific middle position in this one. It really depended on what sort of start I got, what the cars around me did, as to uh, what lines we were going to go take, and for me it was chuck the car into the Joker. Uh, so it was me and Blomquist who end up in the Joker. Now one of the cars on the outside, I'm surprised, opted not to, uh, but uh, we were in such a position where we could go for that. I think potentially it may have been a little bit loud. I see Blomquist's car got really, really sideways. I think it may have hit the back of mine. Uh, with a little bit of a little bit of connections going on, that is the internet for you. Uh, some some time. So we came out of this first lap actually in a pretty good stead. We've done our joke lap, and we actually were not all that far away from the vehicles that ahead, about 2.8 seconds, two seconds ish uh, away. So we were kind of on the bubble. If everyone else joked, uh, we would come out ahead. Now the Fiesta would dive down the Joker this lap around, and that would, I say, clear. It would be out of the way of uh, me and Blomquist as we headed around these next couple of corners. As I said, Audi was working really, really well. It's actually really nice to drive in the wet. I was really happy with this. We'd barrel our way down towards the hairpin again. It is, you chuck the car in through the way I found speed in that corner it really was down a couple of gears yank the handbrake throw the car through the turn and that would that would do it that would get you the, the speed through that corner you don't really see where you're going you just kind of chuck and hope almost up ahead Krogstad and Hensid were still uh, very close together and that's what I wanted to see I wanted to see the pair of them fighting I knew that if they would fight one another that little bit too much it would actually give me a chance it would give me and Blomquist a chance if anything uh, because well the Peugeot was behind me it wasn't right sat on the bumper though uh, you know there was a little I don't know half a second gap and I could still pull I could pull that gap out every time we came around this hairpin that was that was the one point on the track that I was able to make you could see the gap I made actually back to Blomquist through that hairpin in these conditions and the two Peugeots up ahead well they were very close together one more lap to go 
would have them take the joke lap. And I was, I was watching the times and I knew how close it was going to be. I thought they were going to come out just a little bit ahead of me, but I knew it was going to be really, really close as they ran into the joke. And I hope they were going to tangle with one another. They didn't through the joker. They are all very sensible. Krogstad comes out there. Uh, Hansen comes out there, leaves a gap on the inside. We try and throw our car uh, up the inside. Now, I thought I got past. There was a little bit of lag that ends up Hansen back ahead of me. That's fine. I'm going to do my favourite manoeuvre. And we chuck the car up the inside through the hairpin. Hansen left a little bit of a space. Unfortunately, uh, Tibby's still got a very, very good run off of the next, or sort of down here. And I make a mistake in the final. It really annoys me. I just missed my breaking point. It was my turn to leave that little bit of a gap on the inside, and you can't do that to Timmy Hansen. You're going to lose the position in that one. And unfortunately, despite an absolutely wonderful overtake to get my car up into second place, I really, really wanted that second place. Uh, it was a wonderful pass to get myself up into second place. However, just the tiniest error. It was a great, so it's a great opportunistic pass from, from Timmy. Just that little mistake. Uh, would be what would what would cost me in the end. I say it would cost me. It dropped me down to third. It still, it was a really, really quick overall time. And while we were all battling one another and, and all that, um, we're still a very, very good overall time. We were in the mid 35s in the wet. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was quick. It was quick, uh, and it would be enough to see me into the semi-finals. There was a little bit of a problem. Unfortunately, uh, with the semi-finals, this is more of a game issue than anything. Uh, when the lobby was set up for the first of the semi-finals, tuning was forced off by accident. So the cars couldn't run with any setups. Which meant that for the second semi-final, because who qualifies for the final is determined on, on race finishing time. Uh, the third, because it would be five cars of race, third place, the fastest third place time would be in the final. The second semi-final had to be run with tuning setups forced off as well. That hurts the Audi, sadly, uh, because stock tuning is not quite so good uh, for the Audi. We're not talking massive amounts here, but there is a, there is a bit of a difference. And I knew this was going to be super tough. I knew this was going to be a, a really difficult race uh, for me in this one. I mean, we found ourselves uh, starting on the outside, which, uh, which, which meant it was joker time, basically, for us. Unfortunately for me, not only uh, did we have... Uh, setup related issues we also got a ping into the first corner uh, now I don't know whether um, uh, Fraskin knew I was on the inside or turned in a little bit too much uh, whatever it was I got hit while trying to get into the Joker and once I got hit my car was going sideways it wasn't the you know it wasn't a complete spin it wasn't the worst possible it was just enough to lose me a good couple of seconds and that was I say that was that I knew we were gonna have to re it was gonna be a really tough one to come back uh, from, from this one sure we got the Joker out of the way first which was okay, and there may well have been, I was, there, 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 was, there was hoping that there was going to be a big fight up in the front. I'd actually never driven the, so I'd driven the Audi without to set up a little bit uh, in the dry before I decided what setup I wanted to use, uh, but I'd never driven the car in the wet without a setup before, and that's, uh, it's an experience trying to suddenly put that together when you're in the semi-final. You can see up ahead the other cars, we're not too far away. We're still going for, we still do the throw the car through the hairpin. We still, <laughs> we still get that line. Uh, I, I love that corner. That is my favourite corner on this track, I have to say, by a very, very long way. I like hell overall, actually. It's a really good, really good circuit. It does tend to get some pretty close racing. Like, lap times around here are very, very close. Uh, I say it's a simple track. That's probably not the right way. There aren't too many corners to learn, and lap times do tend to be close. Difficult to master, as any sort of racetrack is. Uh, up ahead, uh, Krogstad had come out of the Joker and was uh, right, uh, right there in third place. But it wasn't terribly far back. You know, he's one of those kind of frustrating as just a little bit too far back to really be able to do uh, all that much you see even with the Audi as it was I could still make a little bit of time up through the hairpin we just lost it a little bit elsewhere uh, managed to not ping the wall it's really easy to ping the wall through there very I mean, we saw it across the first heat kind of surprised we didn't see more cars I smacked it so many times and bloody practice while I was figuring out what line I wanted uh, through there head on to lap four it was still a case of uh, Van Gisbergen and uh, Birmingham up at the front uh, were running a little bit apart like the big I said, they'd never really been that big battle I knew if there was ever going to be a chance to be I needed there to be a big battle between the cars up there we had actually started catching uh, there was a little bit more lag on so unfortunately I mean, maybe cost me a little bit of time through the hairpin um, can't really do all that much uh, about that one at the end of the day there's always the, the online Esports, online racing, sort of a thing that can occur. I uh, actually drift a little bit wide. Um, yeah, a li little bit, a little bit, a little bit of shame about the about the cars. Uh, I feel the Audi in the wet for some reason just worked. It was just really, really quick uh, in the wet when I got it when I got it working. Uh, in terms of the actual race, I mean, you can see up ahead we were, we were terribly far behind. Krogstad had uh, come out in second uh, after Birmingham had taken the Joker. Van Gisbergen was making the most of running in clean air and was going to come out. Expected to come out with the lead, sort of four-second gap uh, back to the rest of the of the group. We could see the Peugeots 
We were there. We were there watching the Persians having their own little battle. I was desperately trying anything I could to stay as close as possible. This is Rallycross. You never know what's going to happen. If uh, Krogstad and Birmingham got together, had a crash, it, you know, could, there's always a potential if uh, the car ahead of me can't avoid it. And so you've always got to be there. You've always got to be as close as you possibly can to the action. Van Gisbergen with Joker and stay. I can see Van Gisbergen down in the distance and uh, that little bit further away. We'd fallen back a smidge on this uh, final lap. It's still running half, let's say half decent lap times uh, with the car. It's not quite as, like, this This sort of, like, damp track is a little bit quicker than the full, full wet uh, that we had in a couple of the heats. As we headed around the final corner, though, it was not going to be for the Audi, unfortunately. It'd have to be a fifth place. I tried everything, did as much as I could with that, um, but that is the way that it goes sometimes. Unfortunate, little technical difficulties. I mean, we were only five seconds down on Van Gisbergen at the end of the day. Um, considering the start, considering I lost a couple of seconds off the start with a half spin and the setup, I was still very pleased with how the Audi, how the Audi performed, how I performed in this one. Uh, it was definitely, definitely a lot closer than I had been in some of the previous rounds. Some of the previous rounds I'd kind of got through with consistency and staying out of trouble. Uh, here we genuinely had a lot of pace with the car. You know, the, the third qualifying heat had been incredible. Um, the fourth one had also been pretty good. I wish I wish I'd managed to stay ahead of, of, of Hansen. I have to say, but. Uh, yeah, almost made it. Almost, almost got the, almost had the speed. I am determined, I am determined to be the one to get a non-Persio into a bloody final. I feel like I can do it with the Audi. I feel like I stand a chance. The 208s are very, very quick. The 208s are very, very quick. There's some very, very quick drivers uh, in those. I feel like I might just be able to get an Audi into, into a final. It's going to be tough, though. It's going to be tough. I said, this was an awesome, awesome... Uh, events, awesome qualifying rounds, and so on. A little guy about the semi-final, but the actual qualifying rounds were fantastic. I've been thoroughly enjoying my time with this one. The next race in this championship, if you want to come along and watch, is actually tomorrow. Uh, we're racing around the Swedish circuit that I am not as comfortable around as hell, but hopefully will be by the time it comes to actually taking part in that. I don't know. Uh, I like hell. Hell, it's a cool circuit. Um, but yeah, if you want to come along and watch that, I'll put a link in the description. It's the official uh, World Rallycross YouTube channel. Starts at 1.30 uh, BST. Hopefully, going to be getting... Hopefully going to be getting to the semi-final, at least, with the Audi. We'll see if we can do anything more. Get to the semi-final and you never know what's going to happen, because they can be manic and crazy, because that's Rallycross for you. Uh, but I've been having an awful, awful lot of fun uh, with this one, that is for sure. So I hope you're able to come along, cheer on, fail racing that, and, uh, and see what happens. I hope you all enjoyed this video as well. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.